Graphical analysis is a really, really valuable tool and we'll be using graphs a lot. So the shape of a graph tells us about the relationship between the y and x variables. So the most common one and particularly in grade 11 that we're interested in is linear. So I tend to say it's a linear trend line that indicates a directly proportional relationship. So trend line and relationship. So we're going to get this kind of graph where we have straight line, line of best fit. You can see whether you've got any outliers or anomalies. And we go and we get the equation and it'll be in the form of y equals mx plus c. That's the equation for a straight line. The gradient is going to be m and c will tell us in the cases where it should go, the line should go through 0, 0, c will indicate systematic error. So they've got here how to work out the slope by hand, but we'll be doing the majority of our graphs by Excel and we'll get it to give us the equation straight up. Hello, Sal. Get off the book. So it talks here also about linear but not directly proportional. That's when it doesn't go through 0, 0 and it wasn't meant to go through 0, 0. It's still linear but not directly proportional. All right, over here under cells. Thank you. We've got a power relationship. So Y is proportional to X raised to some power. And usually it's squared. It could be cubed. You also have an inverse where it's the power is to the negative 1 or the negative 2. So it might be something over a squared. Get off. Uh, this one comes into radiation when we do that. They're the main ones. So parabolic relationship. Um, distance a rock has fallen from the top of a cliff and the time elapsed. It's going to give you this kind of shape. So when you get that shape, you know you have got parabolic. Y is proportional to X. Oops, sorry. Y is proportional to X squared. So I can tell that about these two things. An inverse relationship. So that's Y is proportional to X to the negative 1 or Y is proportional to 1 over X. Those are the same thing. X to the negative 1 is 1 over X. It's going to give you a shape like this. So volume and pressure have that kind of relationship. Inverse square is a pretty popular relationship in formulas. So Y is proportional to 1 over X squared or y is proportional to x to the negative 2, and you get this shape. Now, uh, gravity is like that, electrostatic force is like that. The trouble is when you do a prac, these look much the same. So we do something called linearizing, and that'll be a couple of pages over. Just have a quick look at these others. So this one is a square root. I can't think of an example of that at the moment. Exponential and logarithmic. So what have they got there? An exp something about explosions. Um, the breakdown decay of a radioactive substance. So this one here will be interesting to us when we're doing radioactivity. The trouble with those lines is it's a bit hard to make a prediction from them or to get any other values from them. So what they do is linearize the graphs. So if we look at this one, which is y is proportional to 1 over x, instead of just graphing x along here, if you graph 1 over x, it magically turns into a straight line, and straight lines are much more useful. So this time they've got volume, 1 over pressure, whereas this graph was volume over pressure. This is volume against 1 over pressure, and that linearizes the graph. So if you do an experiment in your student experiment and you get a curve like this, 
you're going to linearize it so that we can do some more with it. Same with this one. This is the 1 over x squared. By graphing 1 over the distance squared, it turns it into a straight line. So that's a really valuable tool and it tells you a lot about the relationships. You can do that again and again and again. All right, using the graph to evaluate errors, we've talked already about your systematic error where it's hitting the graph when it should have gone through zero, zero. So calibration error, parallax, zero error, those sorts of things. When we get a straight line, we can also get the R squared value. And that tells us about how well the line fits the data, whether or not we've done a... a consistent job. So if you look at these two, these data points are quite close to the line. It has an R squared value of 0.9948. This one, it's the exact same line with the exact same slope, but the points are more scattered and it has an R squared value of 0.9597. So as far as the precision of the data and the consistency of the data, this is the better one. And in our experiments, we would be aiming for 0.98 or above. Error bars and uncertainty. So when you calculate your uncertainties, and we've done that in tables, we calculate the mean, then we calculate the uncertainty, then we can put on error bars. Another reason that we linearize the graph is so that we can then do the maximum and minimum slope lines. You can't do a maximum and minimum slope line with this curved graph. You need three straight line graphs to do that. And then we do our uncertainty in the slope and our uncertainty in the y-intercept.